Okay, so question, pop quiz. Is this gun the perfect BOK gun right here, dudes? It is my own AR-15 build, mostly BCM. It's lightweight, it is awesome, super reliable. Perfect BOK gun? No, it's not. If you said no, congratulations, you're correct. And it's probably because you watched part one, Nothing Fancy Principles of BOK, okay, or something like that, Principles of BOK, okay, where I talk about the philosophy of what we're going to talk about now. So that is foundational. And, I, and those philosophies have been put out through many reviews, many philosophy gear system videos over the last 10 years here in TMP for sure. But I put it down into its own separate video. Please watch that and it will set the groundwork for this one when we dig into the kit and I show you my specifics. Nothing cosmic here, guys. I'm not going to say what I'm going to show you is like, oh my gosh, that's so innovative. It's not. It's actually pretty basic and I said that in principles would be okay. It's basic. Now, my approach is different. My philosophies are different than probably anyone else's. You've watched or heard or read. You probably know that from part one. And I want to super skim through those principles because they're going to, again, kind of weave into why I, I do what I do in the kit. Real fast, real fast. Don't bug out unless you have to. Remember that one? Can you hike long distances? Don't romanticize it. No running gunfights are to be expected. Another reason why you might not need an AR-15. It's a survival kit. You're just kind of trying to survive. Everything is disposable. I mean everything. Caching, the principle of caching, so maybe you take something with you and you can cash into place, come back to it later. All the different scenarios, I touched on that lightly. I mean, there's so many. You can't prepare for everything. And SAWC lives with the concept of a bug out kit. You have to understand and really appreciate SAWC. There are going to be some things that I have, they're heavy. You'll see in my kit and you'll go, oh my, oh my gosh, that's way too heavy. But for what I want and my own personal needs, my own personal preferences, Firepower versus mobility, bro. Hmm, what do you know? Another TMP philosophy. I set that in place 10 years ago knowing I would get to this video, by the way. Not made up. That's totally true. It, I, I really had BOK videos in mind when I came up with firepower versus mobility. The concept of it. Not that I came up with the concept, but pushing it towards a, a systems philosophy, it's a very, th very important thing to understand. Again, we hit it on a little bit in that first video. Uh, food, water, shelter, the rest is extra. The principle of self-containment. In other words, every kit is going to be self-contained uh, self and individual and complete. So you're, I talked about in the part one. Uh, you are dead to me principle. That means once you put something in, be okay. You never take it out. Never, never, never. Unless you need to service it or replace it, upgrade it with something better. Mostly a wheeled conveyance. Secondarily, it's a backpack form of carry with your BOK. Not super quality really important. Keep a journal uh, because rule of law will be reestablished. Keep a journal. It's good for your mental state for recording what's happening. I talked about th that too. Uh, you can't rescue the world is another one. So you're just going to have to do what you can, you can do. You're mostly there to preserve your family or your group, whoever that is. Whew. That's principles to be okay in a nut and shell. Now, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna do this video because there's so much to talk about. If I talk straight through, it might be two hours. So I might just cut it off somewhere um, awkwardly, which I've been known to do, and then we'll pick it up in a part three. But right now, I'm gonna talk about the kit, the actual container to your BOK. After that, we're gonna go into the specifics of shelter, food, first aid kit, tools, weapons, and toiletries. Let's do that. I will say right now, and I put a lot of thought into this, I mean like a decade's worth, there's really no perfect BOK kit container now. I think with this video, and I don't mean to say that, oh my gosh, I'm all that, but no one's really made a perfect BOK kit, and it really mystifies me. But I'm gonna set some principles out here and I bet you some companies step up to the plate and start making a kit that I'm gonna describe right now. And I think that's great. Go ahead and do it. All I ask is you give me credit. You just say, hey, we watched an fancy video. Market needs something. Here's a kit according to the specs. Maybe make some changes. That's all I'm saying. What you want is something super lightweight, relatively durable. This is important. It's relatively 
relatively durable, but not ultimately durable, because remember, the principle will be okay. Everything is disposable. So you don't need a kit that, or a kit container that lasts for five years. You want it to last probably under hard use 30 days. And hard use to me is rolling it down a gravel road, dragging it through a patch of woods over rocks and logs and stuff. It should be able to put up with that for 30 days. So I said lightweight, relatively durable, uh, subdued colors. It doesn't and shouldn't have to be in camouflage. In fact, stay away from camouflage if you can avoid it. I'll tell you why later. You probably know already. It should be wheeled and a way to support the weight while being wheeled. Again, there's no containers like this on the market yet. I'm talking about an extendable mechanism that would pop down. So you have a roller back, but you have something that pops down, hits the road, and it can really support the weight better. Again, lightweight, it's gonna take some engineering, some thought, there's nothing on the market like that yet. Waterproof would help, and compartmentalization would help. And then really, really important to your container is that it should have backpack straps. That really narrows down the containers, okay? Because there's one company at Sierra Designs, and it's who I've been using for over a decade for my BOK containers, and they do a good job. They're one of the few manufacturers that makes a large size duffel bag with backpack straps on it. And I'll show you the one I've been using for, again, before I started TMP, going back, I believe it was till 2006 is when I put my first BOK together in earnest. And like I said, in part one, I just overhauled one of them and I've upgraded some materials, the container I've upgraded, I'll show you all that. Now, I'm not gonna hit all those principles of the perfect container all over again, but there is another way to carry your stuff. And I'm gonna show you here in a second and backing up just a little bit further. A lot of times when you hear a term B.O.B., bug out bag, maybe, I don't know if anyone's used the term bug out kit too much, I've always used it. You see guys that have small containers. They're like the size of like a field pack or a tactical three day pack. I say that's not a bug out kit. There's no way you have enough room to store what you need. Remember going back to principles of be okay. I said it is not a 72 hour kit. It is more like a week long, preferably multi week long survival kit for one individual tailored to that individual's, ne individual's needs. And that means it's going to need a relatively large container unless you're just really, really ready to rough it. The stuff you buy in the stores, the 72 hour kits are pretty much a joke. You might be able to pull some of this stuff out of there and survive on it. But remember, they're mostly slated to marketing. They want you to buy their stuff and, and give you a warm fuzzy that you're prepared. I've spent I've spent a lot of time looking at these kits on the shelves and whatnot, survival stores and online, and I haven't seen one where I'd go, yeah, that's a well put together kit. That's a kit that I could live anywhere, well, mostly anywhere for a week. Not to say that there aren't some good kits that have some good components in them, but none of them will be to the level I'm going to show you now. Another reason you don't see that is because it's expensive. To put together a good kit, it's going to be I would say probably over $1,000 easily. Now you don't need top tier stuff in your BOK, like uber expensive stuff. You don't need that. Remember, we want it to last a week, two weeks, if we're really good, 30 days, but you need at least good quality stuff in your BOK. Not low quality crap, uh-uh. And that's mostly what you get in those kits you see at Walmart, Costco, they're not great. I mean, it's not a kit I would put in use in my family. I might buy one and then scavenge from it. Maybe it's the food. Maybe there are some items in there that I like. But buying that kit, putting it on the shelf and thinking you're prepared, a standard pre-purchased or pre-packaged 72-hour kit, no, I don't recommend them. I haven't seen any yet that really attract me. And I think I have some photos that I'll be rolling in when I'm talking about it because I've been planning these videos forever. And I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Again, there are some ones that are better than others. Use your own judgment. Myself, and I think you might agree since you're watching this series of videos, build your own if you want it done right. Again, it's going to be tailored to the individual. You're going to have a lot more quality. You're going to have a lot more capabilities. And it's just going to cost money, dude. It's going to cost money. There's no two ways around it. I mean, if you want good quality to the top tier quality, which is up to you, that's what you want. 
I'm just kind of throwing a, a figure out there, a thousand bucks plus per kit. Might be less, maybe you get some deals and you buy on sale, which I do with my VOKs and have done forever. Uh, you might come under the radar with a $500 kit that's every bit even maybe more capable than the one I'm gonna show you right now. But with that capability, getting back to my, my thing I was talking about, you need a kit that can contain it, okay? You're not gonna do it in a three-day pack, says me. The BOBs I've seen online here on YouTube, maybe they're great for running across the neighborhood, going living in the field for three days, and that's about it. There's no way they can contain everything, at least to a high level of comfort, which I advocate, and you're gonna see that I do take on some weight in my BOKs to achieve that goal. Okay, that's really important. When we get to shelter and sleeping materials, that's important to me. I want to have some sense in that emergency situation, in that bug out situation, a sense of comfort, a sense of home. Do you really want to be sleeping in a vinyl tube tent with a space blanket from your store-bought 72-hour kit and the winds are blowing 20 miles an hour and the temperature's 21 degrees outside? Try it. Try it. And I've modeled that in TMP. Me and Allie went out one year. We lived in that tube tent. There's a reason I did that because now I'm going to roll in that footage or the photos of it. I've done it and it freaking sucks. Tube tents are garbage. And yet they're marketed as the go-to survival shelter. Oh, you're good to go if you got a tube tent. You know, we just, we just have an extruded vinyl, orange vinyl tube that you can live in with your four kids and your wife and you'll be fine. You won't be fine, dude. I, I highly recommend you spend money on a good shelter. And again, it's going to take some room. Spend some time trying to compress it down. Maybe you sit down, the dad, or if it, you're the mom watching this, you sit down and go, hey, what's really important to us? You can't carry everything. You're going to have to pare it, pare it down. And you might buy a container saying, hey, this is the biggest container that this individual can carry. The biggest one. I'm going to show you one that I'm sizing for Mrs. Nut and Fancy now as our health things change here in the family. I'll show you that here in a second. Now, there's another approach I made reference to. You don't have to have like a wheeled duffel with backpack straps. That's my favorite currently, all subject to change. But for the last 10 years, that's been my favorite conveyance for a bug out kit. You could go this route. So this is a Kelty freighter frame. It's actually called, I wrote it down here, the Kelty cash hauler. It's 130 bucks. I bought it on Amazon but it's five pounds, nine ounces without anything on it. So what is it designed for? Hauling out meat, deer meat, elk meat. It's a hunting backpack. It has a way to strap all types of stuff on it. So it opens up, has a reinforced shelf here that can carry a ton of weight, but it's primarily designed, let me move back here a little bit so you can see it, for hunters, for carrying out pack meat or supplies into a camp. I bought it also for something like Operation Red Skies where I'm hauling ammunition to cash up to a Red Skies event. That's primarily what I, what I got it for. So you can put 50 cal ammo cans here and transport them. Really, really good for that. And actually this is kind of an aside. If you ever anticipate needing to haul something heavy like ammunition from one place to another, you might want to put some thought into how you're going to do it. You're going to do it one can at a time. No, get a cash hauler just like this, and it's pretty capable. This part here is an orange rain cover that will fold out. Again, this is designed for hunters, so there it is. It goes over the cash hauler. Made by Kelty, really, really good quality. And what you could do if you use this for your bug out kit is you could use any duffel then. So you could use a normal duffel bag that would fit into the framework of the cash hauler or some, another pack like this, and then you're good to go. So you have a full backpack suspension system, a Kelty suspension system. Look at those pads. You got a sternum strap, really good suspension system, a waist belt. I mean, you're talking backpack quality here. You are paying for it in terms of weight though. It's almost six pounds without anything on it. And then you put your duffel bag on it. Maybe you're 10, 11 pounds, which is probably where I'm at now, but, but it could be a great way to go. There is a disadvantage to every system I'm going to show you. One is the weight for this. Maybe you're going to be limited in size, the type of in size of duffel bag you could strap on here. 
And then let's say the person cannot, they cannot backpack, they're injured. Maybe they have a shoulder injury, a leg injury, a foot injury, they have a busted foot or, or, or sprained foot, can they backpack at all? But you built your whole system around this, hauling, you know? That's not what I'm doing. I'm, again, going back to principles of BOK, the first part, what I want is primarily a wheeled conveyance with secondarily backpack straps. What I'm not going to get is this. I'm not going to get a suspension system like this. Let's go back to what I said about the perfect BOK container. The perfect BOK container is going to be like the one I'm going to put on the table. This is Sierra Designs one, but it's going to be upgraded. It's going to have a better backpacking suspension system. It's going to have a smart engineer scrub the whole pack, say, where can we save weight on this? And maybe they can get a huge duffel for, and this is, I think would be a reasonable weight, seven pounds to include a, a, a wheel, you know, roller skate wheel system, adequate durability, and waterproofness. Oh, and one thing I want to add is I would like for the perfect BOK container to have flotation for our hurricane victims. Think about Katrina, guys out in flooded neighborhoods. It'd be super cool in your BOK system that you have an inflatable collar. Either it's a CO2 inflation, and it just inflates around the collar. You can freaking huck your container out in the water and it goes bobbing. Maybe it's orange and you just bail in and dude, you're set. God, no well, not clothes, that's like a whole different, but for food shelter, hopefully water, you're set. Another addition though. But this is a, a good option, this one right here. The cash hauler, I'll put my Amazon link to this. Use my Amazon links, it supports me as a, a creator here. And this also has a camel back right here. I forgot to show you that. And this, I said no camo colors, but OD is actually okay. Because most people know OD and they know it's kind of a surplus color. I don't think a lot of people necessarily look at OD anymore and go, oh, that's a military co color. I prefer black, but OD is the only color I've ever seen the cash hauler in. Again, it's meant for hunters. Okay, so the one I've used for 10 years, I'm going to put up here right now, is this one right here. So this is a wheeled duffel. It's like a 36 inch wheeled duffel. I bought it in 2006. The quality level is about mid. It's not great, uh, but it's big enough. So this is the size for me at my current age, my current health level where I feel like I can tow it. Okay, and it's a wheeled duffel. See this has an extendable handle, aluminum handle, although this snapped off over the years. Yeah, so I had to like tape it on. So it's again mid quality, maybe a little little bit below mid quality. And then this handle, just like you know, luggage you've seen, should stow, but this one's all busted. Check it out. So I can't stow that handle anymore. Whatever, you know, stuff happens. It's been hauled around to all different locations with a heavy load. I haven't really used it as a BOK, it's just been in storage and gone with me in several deployments because it's been with me. Uh, there's really some things I love about this duffel and things I don't like about it. Uh, I like that it has elastic on top so I can put clothing, a fleece liner, maybe Gore-Tex or something. That's cool. It has wraparound handles so the handles go all the way around the circumference of the wheel duffel to support the weight. I like that. It has end pockets so there's one on each end. That's good. And I don't know if they make this model anymore but I would still recommend it. So if you see it on sale somewhere, the 36 inch old style high Sierra duffel, get it. You're probably gonna get it for around, I think I bought these on clearance like for 65 bucks each. So really affordable. Again, we're talking mid quality. Uh, main compartment is full of uh, replaced BOK items, which I'll get to as we go on. So I'm not gonna show you that quite yet. But it also has a drop down compartment in it. And what I mean is, you see this zipper right here, and it's kind of hard to show. So this compartment right here is separate. It has a zipper that goes around the circumference, and then I can store different things in there. And then I flip it open. I can put my tent, my, my sleeping bag, and other things in there. And then I zip it closed, and I have another top compartment. I really like that feature. That's all good. One thing I don't like about it, and it has been a problem, are the zippers. The zippers, albeit, no, they're not YKK. They're just light duty okay and they're not great and I've had them blow out and cause problems before seeing if I had a zipper failure on this one this one's got good zippers I have a pocket failure right here this is a really delicate balancing act 
act when you talk about a BOK container. Because it's really easy to go, well, I want really bomb-proof zippers, and so let's put thick YKK zippers on it. So manufacturers, listen to me. That's not what I'm asking. I just want something 30-day durable. Not this. This is this is like, you know, what you these are the type of zippers you put on convertible pants shorts. They're they're just they're not good enough. One step up from that is what I like. And then really test them. Make sure they don't bind, make sure they work, and then brag about how you tested your zippers on your BOK container. It would be nice. Uh, here's a pocket failure I had. I had a, a thing of insect repellent that breached and it totally leaked and it destroyed the nylon. You guys remember in my tactical nylon reviews, I talk about different qualities of nylon where you have the vinyl back nylon versus polyurethane coated ballistic nylon. This is the lower quality nylon. nylon. Of course it is. It's only 65 bucks. So this is vinyl backed, okay quality, Chinese produced nylon. Here's a good representation. See that? Vinyl backed. It's not great. So if it gets some type of solvent or something on it, it's going to dissolve it and it's going to lose some structural integrity. Is that the end of the world? No, it's not. But uh, I'd really like something with ballistic nylon, kind of like uh, ta TAG, Tactical Assault Gear or Eagle or Black Hawk level of quality. That would be ideal. But anytime we do that, the costs were here. Now the costs are going to be up here. So you might be paying, I don't know, $2.250 just for the bag. Told you it might be expensive, but that's top tier. That's, and that's assuming it had the other features that I want, top tier. But it, uh, you want to keep your costs reasonable with your bug out kit. So the perfect bug out kit container, uh, I would say $150 for most people would be a reasonable cost. And then it's just going to take some smart engineering. Now, if the manufacturers come out and they go, oh, well, you know, we couldn't get it at $150, but here's $250, I still think that would have a market. I think a lot of guys, for a really smart BOK container with all the things that I've described in this video, I think a lot of people would pay 250 bucks for. Beyond that, I think that's too much. Uh, just knowing my audience, knowing TMP, uh, the market out there, the outdoor market, which I've been in pretty much my whole life, I think most people go, that's too much. I'm not doing it. Now, I told you in comparison to that Kelty cash hauler, that frame hauling pack, uh, the suspension on the backpack straps of this ain't great. Oh, here's the zipper failure right here. See it? It's come separated. Lo and behold. So this, these are the backpack straps on this particular version. And notice my whole slider has busted, dudes. It's gone. The slider completely busted off. I don't know where it's at. And I left it like this for this video. So here, now I open this up just with my finger, and there's no way to reattach it without repairing the zipper. Huh. Albeit, they do have a little Velcro right here, so I could do that. So that's something. And here's your basic straps. That's where we are. I mean, this is one reason I'm making these videos, to get the market up to speed, right? Uh, these aren't great. You know, and what, I have 80 pounds in this backpack, and now I'm carrying them with these straps. There's no sternum strap. It's thinly padded. There's no stabilizing straps. It's not great. But... You know what? Give credit where credit's due. So this pack was made, what, 12 years ago? And High Sierra was doing, and they're still doing what no other manufacturer has done. They're like, hey, big duffel, we're still going to put backpack straps on there. And again, while I made this video, I spent hours and hours researching the amount of manufacturers doing that. Zero. A great bag is by Tactical Assault Gear. It's called their basic loadout bag, I think. It's a huge duffel. It has an aluminum frame on it. There's no pack straps on that. And it's pretty heavy. It's a cool, it has a lot of the elements that I like, but it's missing a lot. I think it's way too heavy. It has a separate frame. I don't want that. I want everything integrated, super simple, super stable, and relatively durable. So again, this was the first gen, I'll just call it first gen, High Sierra 36 inch wheeled duffel. I think it's 36 inches. I could be off on that. Notice my color, by the way. I'm gonna go camo. Blue's great, gray's great, green's great. Uh, stay away from anything camouflage because you are bugging out. You don't want to draw attention to yourself. You, don't, you do not want to seem militaristic. You want to be kind of a ghost. You don't want to draw any attention to yourself. So non-military non colors are preferred. Again, I mentioned OD. I think you could go with OD because it's very common in civilian clothing. That's just me though. 
Uh, what I'm going to show you right now is my replacement tie sear duffel for this. I think I'm just going to throw this one in the garbage because the pocket's blown out, zipper's blown out, uh, or I might repurpose it and use it for something else like hauling gear out in the desert because it still has some life in it. Oh, I forgot to show you a very important feature, and that's the roller skate wheels on this one. So these are inline skate wheels. Notice we have a plastic frame here, which is okay. We have a, you know, a protective portion right here. One thing I hate about this duffel, and I've always hated it, is it cannot stand up vertically when it's loaded. So this is just soft, and so you load this up and then try to stand it up vertically. Unless you've packed it specifically with something flat and heavy on the bottom, it does this, it just falls over. And that's really important because this is how you're gonna store it in the house. Just like that, because at your house, you're gonna have all your BOKs loaded up for each family member. Remember, each one is self-contained and that's what, the way they should store. Maybe you hang them up. That might be good if it's in a basement that could be flooded. You don't want to have them flooded. You want to really, really want to protect your BOKs and probably store them where it's cool because you're going to have food in them and you want that food to last for a long time. If you store it in a hot location, it's the storage life of all your food, whether it's an MRE or a freeze-dried meal, is going to be shortened. But storing, I've tried hanging these up and they're just too heavy. Again, the way I have them loaded up, maybe you're super lightweight and you can hang them on a peg somewhere. But whoever's it is, whether it's your kids be okay, your wife's be okay, they have to be able to access it and get it out of the house if things are crumbling around them. Earthquake, flood, nuke, disaster, whatever. Again, don't bug out unless you have to, but if you have to and you don't have a choice, you need to get to your be okay quick, probably standing straight up in a location that that family member knows about and they're out of there. Remember what I said in principles of BOK, by the way, very important. I don't have room in my current philosophy of BOK for clothing. And I live in a cold state. So in wintertime, like I said, it could be 20 degrees, 10 degrees, 0 degrees. In the summertime, it could be 115 degrees. So when do you bug out? Who knows? When does it kick off? Can I prepare for all four seasons, which we have here? No. What I can do is I can have different clothing flex packs, and that would be a lightweight backpack I would throw on my back. That could go in a tactical three-day assault pack. So in that, I would have everything I would need if I ran out of the house naked. Shoes, clothing of all of, for the season, socks, whatever, whatever you need. It's in there. Outerwear, Gore-Tex, layers, fleece, jam it in that pack. And then if you take your clothing pack and you take your BOK out, double thumbs up. We're still talking about the containers. I haven't even broken into it yet, and uh, I don't even know where we're at. Because I'm going to cut some of this out to kind of make it a little bit shorter. All right, remember what I said? You have to tailor the size of your pack to the family member or your uh, BOK container. This is a representation of that. And this is what we are upgrading to right now. It's called an AT8, again, by the company High Sierra. So this is an upgrade over that previous container, and this is going to be Mrs. Nut and Fancy's. See the size right here? And I bet you a lot of you guys will say this is the perfect size be okay. And I say, okay, um, I want to see it when you're done. I want to see you put everything in it that of the capabilities I'm going to show you and fit it all in here. I will do it for Mrs. Nut and Fancy, but something's got to give. Something in the category of shelter food, FAK, tools, weapons, or toiletries has got to give. And we're going to pare down capabilities, pare down comfort levels, so we can fit it into an SAD, SAWC format that that individual can port, carry, wheel. So I'm pretty impressed with this. It is an upgrade over that previous container. Again, it's the company High Sierra. If I can find a link, I'll put it down below. This one here is not super lightweight. They're putting the weight on it for me, 9.2 pounds. But uh, for the capabilities, current technology, that's kind of where we're at. Look at the, the bottom panel right here. Cool, huh? So we've got skeletonized skateboard wheels. We've got a harder plastic frame right here. Remember, this is two-week, 30-day capabilities. Do we need a metal frame? It's going to add too much weight, I'm thinking. I just need a really high-quality plastic. Uh, but that's where I'm at now. If you can make it weigh what I want and put an aluminum frame on it and make it cost effective, I say rock on. Now, I haven't wheeled this in the desert, rash on it. You know, will these two things break? 
when it's 20 degrees outside, 10 degrees? I don't know. There's a lot of unknowns. This is meant probably as airport luggage. We have like a stand-up brace right here. It's made of plastic too. And I think, again, it's mid-quality, maybe a little bit above mid-quality. And But here's what it can do. It can tail stand. So now we can stand vertically when the pack is completely loaded. That's a big plus. Well done, High Sierra. Here's the backpack straps on the AT8 current technology. They're not much better than the ones I showed you. A little bit better padding. There's no sternum strap. But think about the philosophy of use for this container, though. You know, when they when High Sierra put this together, they think nothing fancy is going to roll this in front of the camera and say, hey, this is for now the go-to be okay container. No. What they did is they was like, hey, this is for people who need to get to a taxi when they landed in Paris. And, and there's too much stuff where they can't wheel it, so they want an option to carry their luggage backpack style for short distances. That's what they put these straps on for. And good on them. Notice we have some ventilation here. That's good. We could build our own or put our own aftermarket sternum straps on there. That's cool. They are better straps than that other one. And I could probably live with them. Again, remember the time frame we're talking about for bugging out. The zipper uh, on this one is a little bit better, I think, than the other one. A little bit, not tons better. But again, they're looking at cost and weight. And anytime you put a higher, you know, higher quality, heavier duty zipper on, what does it mean? More weight, more expense. Here's your ID information uh, place that you put there. And here's your extendable handle. My criticism on the AT8 product is the handle's a little bit too narrow. I would like it to be about two inches wider than this. It barely fits my large sized hands. For Mrs. Nut and Fancy, it worked fine. These are aluminum, and it appears these are using Allen heads to attach the plastic handle to. I would probably expect this to break on you and have a piece of PVC or something that you could lash and repair this with and have it in your kit. So if, let's say this thing snapped off. This thing just breaks and now you're out in the middle of nowhere and you need to go to point B and you're just left point A like two days ago. How are you going to wheel it? You don't want to carry it. I would just like get a piece of PVC pipe, drill through this and zip tie it. Zip tie right here, zip tie right here, big old piece of PVC, good enough. What do you know? This one extend, or extends and retracts. And now we're, and I'm showing you this one because mine is the same bag, but it's bigger. It's like a 36. This is a 26 inch duffel. Okay, the pockets on this version, the AT8, are awesome. They're really excellent. They're better than the last one. The only thing we don't have is elastic on the outside to put our fleece or our Gore Tex. That's unfortunate. We got some bright colors going on here, mostly black with lime green accents. There might be other colors. I don't mind this one at all. Again, I, I'm not trying to be militaristic here. I'm just trying to blend in. And the more Savannah I look, the better. I love that. Here's the main access right here to the AT8 duffel. We have zipper, zippered mesh pocket on the top lid. That's awesome. And then we have fleece line side pockets right here. Well, this one's not fleece line. I think the other one is. I'm going to show you what I store in those. That's on each side. I like this back. It's actually a decent back. And the cost, I think, was reasonable for what it is. This is actually meant for footwear, like, I don't know, stinky tennis shoes or something. Because if you have, if you go on the inside, there's actually a snap strap right here that can retain it. So this can go inside the compartment. Maybe this will be where you put your BOK weapon, you know, if you decide to integrate one, because it's accessible from the external part of the pack and you don't have to go digging in. Again, I'm pretty impressed with the pocket system on the AT8. It's pretty good. Who knows how long they're gonna make this. By the time you catch up with this video in 2019, 2020, it could be long gone. You should have subscribed, bro. <laughs> Stay sub, join TMP Patreon, support all the work. It's a lot. Here's the interior. And just like the other duffel I showed you, this has a bottom compartment that is separate from the top compartment. So you can put your tent, other stuff in there. Notice we have a side mesh bag as well. I like how it's lightly colored so we can keep track of, of all our stuff. We have stabilizing straps in there. This zips open and allows access to the tubes of the handle. And then we have a mesh zippered divider compartment between the two main compartments. 
The fabric, I think, is actually an improvement over that last one. This is not super low quality fabric. What I'm seeing is a probably 500 denier polyurethane coated fabric. I don't think this is vinyl coated like the last one. So they've improved the fabric. The, sto the sewing, the stitching looks like an improvement over the last one. What I'm seeing in this newer High Sierra is the quality of the last one is right here. I think the quality on this one is right about here. Here's that fleece line pocket. It's right here. Uh, it's meant for, you know, I don't know, your phone, sunglasses. You can put whatever in there. But this is about the size that Mrs. Nut Fancy, who has rheumatoid arthritis, can carry right now. Remember, principles of be okay. It is primarily a what class? Wheeled conveyance, that's correct. So the main way we're going to carry this is just like airport luggage. We're going to roll it. That way we're not carrying all that weight. Remember the, what I talked about in my backpacking videos, TCE, time, calories, energy. Uh, all that's in, you know, in, under severe limits in a bug out kit situation. Anytime you're away from your house, really. Uh, so you want to minimize time, minimize calories, minimize energy spent. Here's your handles, by the way. Really good handles on this one. I have a brace on because my wrist is all jacked up, by the way. Seriously, it's not doing good. Speaking of injuries, there's a top handle right there. Woo! All right. So I'm going to make this its own part. This is going to be the bug out kit container video. And then I'm going to come back. We'll do a part three and then we'll dig in and I'll see how far I can get along in that video with shelter food, first aid kit, tools, weapons, and toiletries will be okay. And here comes mine. This is fully loaded. It's heavy. I'm not going to say it ain't. Again, we're going to use those two handles. We're going to use a straight back when we lift. Use our knee. Up it comes. Here's my VOK, dudes. Can you hear me now? Let's see if it stands up as advertised. I don't have it sealed all the way up because we're going to break into it in part three. Yeah, that's a big mamma jamma, dudes. I ain't going to say it ain't. But I have a lot of capabilities there. And remember, I can cache some of this stuff. That is C-A-C-H-E. Cache it. I can hide it up. Uh, notice this, by the way. I have like fluorescent stuff on the exterior of the BOK so I can find it when the lights go out and I'm using a light or whatever. Another principle of your container. Um, there you go. So I don't see the perfect bug out kit container being made right now uh, to review, if I can remember everything, waterproof. Lasting about 30 days, 7 pounds, 8 pounds, really nice backpack suspension on it, preferably floatable that you have an inflation tube around it, good colors, reasonably priced, good wheels and a suspension system where it can stand vertically so when it's loaded just like this one, this is how it's going to be in your garage, in your basement or whatnot. And then uh, maybe a way to support that weight. And what I was meaning by that, and I'll end with this. So if I'm wheeling this 10 miles, and I can't really tilt it, I don't know if I want to hold that weight on my wrist for 10 miles. It'd be nice if I had something coming down, another third wheel that would hit the pavement and hit the ground, be able to support that, that uh, weight, maybe, to a, to a degree. That'd be cool. Again, that's going to take some engineering, some thought, and maybe that adds to weight and cost, and it's just not worth it. That's probably going to be the case. Okay. Whew, there's your take, my take, on bug out kit containers right now. All subject to change. Maybe something comes out and I, you know, I update my philosophy. If TMP keeps going here on YouTube, it's going great in Patreon, then maybe, I don't know, five, ten years down the road, I give another update to the system and say, hey, this is what's come out. This is how I've changed my system. There is a problem with upgrading all the time, and that goes back to cost value. So you went out and you spent, let's say, $1,800 on one BOK to include the containers. If something comes out, you know, do you want to go out and spend $250, bucks, i am just guessing here, on another container for something you may never use? It's a hard decision. I probably think a lot of people would say no. For my two cents, if I wasn't doing TMP and I have my BOKs put together, I choose, let's say, this AT8 High Sierra container. They're all put together. And then a year from now, let's say a tactical bag manufacturer comes out with the perfect BOK container. Do I go out and spend the money? That's a hard decision. Probably not until I had a failure of my other kit. 
so your mileage may vary. I don't know, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. But every bag is tailored to the individual. It's self-contained, and you're applying as best you can the principles of firepower versus mobility and SAWC. Uh, you're, yeah, this is heavy. I ain't going to say it isn't, but I can lose weight out of this very quickly. And I'm going to tell you why in part three. Why the first day is going to be super heavy and the next subsequent days, the follow-on days, you're going to be losing weight out of your kit very quickly. It's going to become much more portable as time goes on. Nothing fancy. Thanks for watching. Make sure you sub, like, hit that notification bell. I'll see you in Patreon. Come back for part three and you can enjoy the stickers. See ya!